Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. Forget about YouTube, I'm building my own video streaming platform. No, actually just kidding, but in this video I want to show you how you can stream videos directly from your Azure Blob storage into your Blazor server application. Here I have the very regular Blazor template and I will just update the template with the things that we need in order to stream videos. So the first thing that we need probably is a new class which we'll call video and we'll see a little bit later why this class is actually useful. In this class we'll have just two properties, one for the title of the video and one for the URL. The next step is to build a blob service client. So let's create a new class and we'll call this class blob service. If you want to get a more in-depth look into how you can interact with Azure Blob Storage from your C-Sharp application, I have a dedicated video on this topic, so you might check it out in the description below or here in the corner up right. So right now for this Blob Service client, I won't dwell too much on it, I will just instantiate it, use it and then make it work with Blazor. So first of all, we'll need a storage account for that. For the purpose of this tutorial, I will be following the simplest route to actually connect to this Blob Storage that I have in Azure and I will use directly the key. And I will do this because by the time I will publish this video, this blob storage will be already deleted. One other thing that we'll need is a blob container client. Obviously, I don't have this package installed right now, so let's install that. So let's open the NuGet package manager and here we'll search for this package called Azure Storage Blobs and we will just install that. Now we have access to this blob container client that we will use just in a few seconds. Next, we'll need a constructor for this because we want to in initialize everything that we need and that would look something like this. So first of all, we need this credential and we create this storage shared key credential based on the storage account and the key. We then just can define the blob URL and then we can use these two information to create a new blob service client and we can then just use the blob service client to actually get the blob container client, which is called videos, which is essentially a folder or a container that I called videos in Microsoft Azure. And if you don't believe me, here are all the videos that I have uploaded to my storage account in a container. So now we can actually create a method that will retrieve us all the information that we need about videos. So we'll have this public async task of list of video and we call it get videos. Remember video is the class that we have just defined previously. Here, let's Let's just initialize a new list of video and then get all the blobs, meaning all the videos that we have in that specific video container client with this get blobs async. Once we have that, we can safely iterate through these video blobs and for each of our item in these video blobs, we want to get the client for the blob itself because from the client, we can get the URI and to string. So in this case, we can create a new instance of video. We will provide the title that we have in the item, which will be actually the name of the blob. And then we will have the URL, which we get from the blob itself. So in the end, we can just return the list of videos and then we can reuse that in our Blazor server components. But before we move over to the components, we need obviously to add this service to the DI container. So we'll have builder services, add scopes, and this is the blob service that we have just created. Now there are two things that I want to achieve. First of all, in this fetch data component, we want to change it a lot. So first we will change the title for this page because I want it to be called Code Wrinkles Videos and also what we display here. Let's remove this tag because we don't need it. And now we need to do a little bit of stuff here in this code behind. First of all, we don't want to have weather forecasts anymore. So instead of having weather forecasts, we will have a list of videos. Then what we want to do is to replace this with actually our service that gets the data. So what we need to do here is remove this inject with the weather forecast service because we don't need this anymore. And instead of this, we will just inject our blob service that we have added to the DI container. And I guess this is also using that we will not be using anymore. So now we can come back here to this method and instead of this forecast, we have videos, await blob service and get videos and we will get all of the videos. Here we will have some errors here, but we will simplify a lot the else that we have here. First of all, we need to change these two videos like that. And then in the else, what we'll have is just a simple unordered list that will contain the titles of all our videos. Now, the idea that we want to implement here is that inside this UL, we will have a list item and inside this list item, we have an A tag. 
And the href is actually or will redirect us to our component that we will implement just in a few minutes where we can actually watch the video. So in order to identify exactly what video do we want to watch, because we don't want to create a page for each video that we want to watch, we use this video URL as a query param. And here we just pass the URL that we get from the blob storage, which is the URL to the exact blob location. And in the tag itself, we will display the title of the video. So let's create now our watch component. So let's add here a razor component and we'll call it simply watch. In this one, I don't want to have any title. Instead, I need to use a page directive. So this will be actually the URL to which the fetch data component will actually redirect once we click on the link. And in the code behind, we'll just need a parameter that will get the query string from the redirection. So this is how we do it. First of all, we decorate this with the parameter attribute. So because this is a parameter and then supply a parameter from query and we have to specify it in a name, the name of the query param. In my case, it was the video URL. And once we have everything in place, the only thing that we need to do is to simply just use this HTML5 video tag in which we can specify a width and a height. And I made sure that this is still the correct aspect ratio for these videos. And inside this video, we can specify a source and the source will actually be this video, which is the URL to the blob container or to the blob that contains that specific video. And that's mostly it. We are done. Let's run the application. And here's the application that we have. So first of all, let's go on this fetch data. And we see that in this fetch data, we see indeed all the videos that I have uploaded to the blob container. And to demonstrate you that these videos are actually streamed by default by Azure Blob Storage and not just downloaded, let me here also open a developer tools and let's clear everything that we have here. So let me click off one of the links. It doesn't really matter on which one. And if you take a look here, you see that we have just downloaded 4.9 megabytes. And in fact, if we get this video started and if we go back here, we see that the size continuously increases. So this video is actually streamed and it is downloaded piece by piece while it is actually playing. So it's streaming, it's not downloading directly, which is actually very, very nice for creating such video streaming or for streaming videos in your Blazor server applications. As you can see, that's really very easy. You don't need any fancy components. You don't need anything else. You just need to use this video HTML5 tag with the corresponding source that points to the Azure Blob Storage video, and it will be just streamed. And obviously, if you want to style your video, then you could use CSS or you can make use of all the CSS that you know to actually style your video component the way that you actually want. There are also third party components out there that you can install and use in your applications. But for these very simple use cases, I would simply just recommend to create your component by yourself because as you've seen, it is not that complicated. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to this channel if you are for the first time here. If you have any question or just want to get in touch with me, don't be shy and head over to the comment section and leave me a comment. I would be more than happy to get in touch with you. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.